What does a country look like when it runs out of people? It's not a sudden catastrophe. It's a slow, quiet crisis. It's the sound of a school closing its doors forever. The sight of a village where the only residents are elderly the feeling of a vibrant culture slowly fading. We are visualizing the startling demographic decline of Japan and several European nations, using official census data and UN projections to reveal a future of ghost towns, a shrinking workforce, and a social contract on the verge of breaking. This is the story of the Great Decline. For most of human history, our story has been one of growth. More people, bigger cities, expanding economies. But in some of the world's most developed and peaceful nations, that story has gone into reverse. The starkest example is Japan. For over a decade, Japan's population has been shrinking. Every year, there are hundreds of thousands more deaths than births. The country is aging at a rate unprecedented in human history. By 2050, it is projected to have 20 million fewer people than it does today. By the end of the century, its population could be half of what it was at its peak. The root cause is simple, a collapse in the fertility rate. For decades, Japan's birth rate has been far below the 2.1 children per woman needed to maintain a stable population. The result is a society that is becoming profoundly old. The gentle, melancholic ringing of a bell at a town hall, announcing not a birth or a wedding, but the closure of the last local shop is the sound of this decline. It's a quiet and dignified fade into silence. But Japan is not alone. What happens when this same phenomenon takes hold across an entire continent? Europe is a sound is facing its own demographic winter. Across the continent, from Germany and Italy to Spain and Poland, birth rates have been below replacement level for a generation. While immigration has masked the decline in some countries, the underlying trend is stark. Italy's population is now shrinking every year. Germany, despite high immigration, is projected to see its population decline significantly in the coming decades. Eastern Europe is facing an even more severe crisis with a double blow of low birth rates and high emigration as young people leave for opportunities in the West. The result is a continent that is aging faster than any other in the world. The hollow echo of footsteps in a vast, empty piazza in a historic Italian hill town, where the young have all left for the cities, captures the feeling of this continental shift. It's the feeling of a great civilization growing old, its vibrancy slowly draining away, leaving behind beautiful but empty monuments. The consequences of this are not abstract, they are real, and they are brutal. What does a shrinking, aging population actually do to a country? The economic consequences are the first to hit. A shrinking population means a shrinking workforce. This leads to labor shortages and slower economic growth. It also means a smaller tax base. There are fewer working age people to pay the taxes needed to support a rapidly growing number of retirees. This puts an unbearable strain on pension systems and healthcare. The social contract, the implicit promise that the young will care for the old, begins to fray and break. Japan is already a living laboratory for this crisis. They are world leaders in robotics, not just for industry, but to create companions and caregivers for their vast elderly population. Rural areas are dotted with akia, or abandoned ghost houses. The very real and unsettling sight 
of a brand new technologically advanced robot companion spoon feeding an elderly person in a silent room is a vision of this future. It's a future where technology is called upon to replace a generation that was never born. The problem is not just economic, it is cultural. A society that is not having children is a society that is not investing in the future. It becomes risk averse, stagnant and backward looking. Innovation slows, entrepreneurship declines. The cultural dynamism that comes from youth fades away, replaced by a sense of managed decline. Is this inevitable? Is there any way to reverse this trend? Governments in these countries are fully aware of the crisis. They have tried everything. They offer generous parental leave, subsidized childcare, and direct cash payments or baby bonuses to encourage people to have more children. But so far, nothing has worked on a national scale. The powerful economic and cultural forces that lead to low fertility, such as high costs of living, urbanization, women's education, and a focus on careers, have proven impossible to reverse with government policy. Some countries, like Germany and Canada, have turned to immigration as a solution, bringing in young workers to offset the demographic decline. But this also creates its own social and political challenges and is not a solution that a culturally homogenous and historically closed off society like Japan has been willing to embrace on a large scale in the awkward, hopeful silence in a government-sponsored speed dating event in Tokyo where young people are being encouraged to meet and marry is the sound of a desperate and so far failing attempt to fix a problem that may be beyond the state's control. So what is the ultimate lesson from this great decline? Is this the inevitable future for the rest of the developed world? The story of demographic decline in Japan and Europe is a cautionary tale. It shows what happens when a society achieves a high level of economic development and personal freedom, but loses its demographic vitality. The United States has so far avoided this fate due to a slightly higher birth rate and, crucially, high levels of immigration. But even in the US, fertility rates are now well below replacement level, suggesting that it may only be a matter of time before it faces a similar, if less severe, challenge. The data presents a paradox. The very things we associate with progress, longer lives, better education, and economic security have created a world where, in many places, we are choosing not to replace ourselves. This is the quietest and perhaps most profound crisis of the 21st century. It's a crisis that unfolds not in a single dramatic event, but in a million empty cradles year after year until a nation slowly, silently fades away. If you believe understanding the deep demographic forces shaping our world is critical, consider following for more data-driven stories.